comes home. And strangers line the streets to salute. To show respect. It's an amazing sight. To say thank you. Very thankful for him and his service and for this family. Killed in the mountains of Afghanistan, the body of Staff Sergeant Ryan Knaus returns to the mountains of East Tennessee. Good evening, glad you're here for WVLT News at 11. I'm Ted Hall. And I'm Amanda Hara. Thanks for joining us. We'll tell you how to pay tribute to Staff Sergeant Knaus this weekend. But first, we want to take you through his final homecoming before he is laid to rest at Arlington National Cemetery in Virginia. A charter plane carrying his body landed at McGee Tyson Airport at 1030 this morning. You see a line, a long line of service members and law enforcement from around East Tennessee saluting. The Canals family asked that we not show the transfer of the casket from the plane to the hearse. They shared Sergeant Canals with the world. They wanted to keep that moment private. East Tennesseans lined the route from the airport to Minot Funeral Home in Halls, not far from the Canals home. Among the people paying respects, a mom and her young children. Carrie Fry says she wanted to see true patriotism. I was humbled. Um, it really, as a mom, it hurt my heart to know um, that a mom out there had lost their son. Um, but at the same time, I was so proud um, to know that there's still young men that are giving their lives for our country. The sergeant's mother says her son lived with no regrets. Sometimes it does not happen the way you'd like. But my boy would redo all of this again and again and again and salute to our country and to those he was trying to save. We know that this was not something that should have happened, but it did. And we want to thank everybody that is showing love right now and support. And um, we can't thank enough our military family now. TPT 9000, we missed you. And though you would not want this to be such a big deal, you are a big deal. The world watched those last days of the American withdrawal from the airport in Kabul, and so did the Canals family. They knew their loved one was there in the chaos, and they heard the warnings that a terrorist attack could happen at any moment. Still, Wayne Canals says he never expected this. But, uh then the news came and uh, the black vans pull up and you think it'll never happen to you, but uh, your chest kind of empties out and you feel very small. Wayne Canal says he will see his grandson again. Before he left, uh, I asked him, are you trusting Jesus Christ for your salvation? And he said, yes. And that really meant a lot to me. Sergeant Ryan Canals leaves behind a wife, Elena. The couple had been married for five years. They were high school sweethearts. She calls him the most wonderful husband and friend. I thought he should have been a history professor. I thought he should have done, you know, he could, he was one of those people, he was just so brilliant. He could have done whatever he wanted, but he wanted to serve his country and he did, and it was so fulfilling for him. And, you know, he went through so many different MOS changes and finding out his niche, and he really did in the end there with psyops and, you know, psychological operations because he was fulfilling his role in its fullest capacity. He was brilliant, and he was using every capability he had to help people. Now, working in those final moments to help people escape Afghanistan, so many of us who never met him now feel that we know him. Gwendolyn Ducree shows us the special connection between the fallen soldier and the people of his hometown. You gave it all. A job worth living and dying for. You did your job to the, you know, until the moment that God called you home. 23-year-old Staff Sergeant Ryan Knaus paying a priceless sacrifice for people he'd never meet. The Knoxville native is one of 13 service members killed after an airport suicide bombing in Afghanistan. 
those same strangers he put his life on the line for now saying thank you. Part of me is proud that we have a, uh, you know, an individual from our community that has given the ultimate sacrifice. Former servicemen Doug and Paul standing by for a quiet procession, bringing their hero home. An escort of first responders and active service members traveling from McGee Tyson Airport to mine at funeral home in the Halls community. The sergeant's arrival, a reflection of the red, white, and blue that's waving goodbye. We're, we're part of the world. And little, little halls, crossroads, Tennessee, um, is still doing what we can to, to provide for this country. You know, he was our local hero, but there was another 12 heroes from other locations around, around this U.S. Small towns, you know, all of them, you know, and we just need to remember everybody. Whether these strangers are holding a flag or have a hand on their heart, they're sharing a moment of gratitude for Canal's wife, parents, and grandparents. A good group of people, a, group, a good family that, that represents the best of the best. A moment these strangers say is worth sharing for a man who died doing his job. In Knoxville, Wendell and Ducree, WVLT News. People are placing tributes to Staff Sergeant Canals at a memorial now in Gibbs. Yeah, that's where Sam Luther is right now. Sam, looks like there's quite a bit going on there. What are you seeing? Lieutenant Amanda, we're here off of East Emory Road for perspective. It's about a mile away from Gibbs High School. Right there, you see a big memorial outside of the Lincoln Rogers. Gibbs Community hometown hero, Staff Sergeant Ryan Canals. Just below it, a really cool scene for the community to get involved with. You see there flags, wreaths, red, white, and blue flowers, stones that just say the word pray, signs that say welcome home soldier. And if we walk around, we're going to show you the other side of this memorial right behind here at this Weigels. To this side, you've got a drop box, cards that should hopefully end up to the Canals family. It's a way that this community can get involved. And if we walk around a little bit further, Take a look at this, just the broad scope of all of the names on this list, all of the messages to the Canals family. Some ones right here, rest easy soldier, you will never be forgotten. That one by Mr. Griffin, thank you for your service, rest in peace soldier, God has you now. That note there by Danielle, again, the scope of the names on this canvas, the back end of this memorial in the hundreds. Many of them likely never met Ryan Canals. He was one of the 13 U.S. service members that died over a week ago in that suicide bombing in Kabul at that airport there. Uh, Ted Demanda, this is really just a little bit of a look on how the community can still get involved here in Gibbs. I know the family wants a lot of the services kept to themselves. They want it private. This is an easy way that the community can get involved here. Signing your name, dropping a message, uh, leaving a note for the family, a uh, really easy and cool way for folks to get involved. Ted Demanda. And thank you. We got to hear most of the important things that Sam was saying there. Amazingly touching how many East Tennesseans showed up to support this fallen service member today. There is a public memorial. It's Saturday at Gibbs High School, the 20th anniversary of the September 11th attack on America. The memorial service there at Gibbs starts at five o'clock in the football stadium. Now, if you can't go to the public memorial on Saturday, you can still pay your respects by signing a guest book at the halls or Fountain City locations of the Minot Funeral Home. And you can see Staff Sergeant Knauss's complete homecoming coverage in the WVLT News app. Ryan Knauss's name is expected to be added to the East Tennessee Valley Veterans Memorial in Knoxville. Granite pylons bear the names of more than 6,200 veterans who've died in service since the beginning of World War I. Staff Sergeant Ryan Knauss's homecoming is bringing out strong emotions for families who've also lost loved ones in war. Our Will Puckett brings us the story of a Gold Star wife hoping to make a difference for grieving families. Each and every name that dons the side of one of these stones represents someone who gave their life for our country. Now their families have become what's known as Gold Star Families. It's a fraternity unlike any other, and those who are already a member of that distinguished fraternity are ready to welcome Staff Sergeant Ryan Knauss's family with open arms. And I've walked that journey and I want them to know they are not alone and that they have our 100% support. And Chris Reistrom Emmer is a Gold Star wife and that title 
is one she wears proudly. The sacrifice, the loss, and the hurt, and we served. And to be honest with you, we still are serving. Watching the return of Staff Sergeant Canals, it took her back to when she experienced the loss of her husband while he was on a mission overseas. You know, a stay-at-home mom, had my baby, my seven-month-old, in her high chair. My three-year-old was at preschool, and I see these naval officers coming up to my door. A Gold Star family member. It's a fraternity unique to any other, but it's one that brings along its own struggles. That feeling to know that your spouse, your son, your daughter, your brother, your sister is never going to come home, that never goes away. It becomes part of who you are. But it's a part of her, and now it's a part of Staff Sergeant Canals' family, too. It's a group that's inseparable, but it's one that knows what every single person in it is going through. Don't lose hope. Hold on to your faith, even if it feels like you can't make it another day. Rystrom Emmer says things don't necessarily get easier, but having those other families who understand just what they're going through helps her and everyone else find a little bit of peace in something unimaginable. In Knoxville, Will Puckett, WVLT News. Her nonprofit again called, providing Promise Ministries is teaming up with the families of all 13 killed in the closing days of the war. They're going to get care packages. We have more information on how you can help in the WVLT News app. Could you be getting a COVID vaccine whether you want one or not? President Biden issuing sweeping rules now. Plus, Coach Heifel gets ready for a big test. Can he help his team knock off a of power? And those cooler temperatures continue, but not for too long. The heat and humidity are in that eight-day forecast. I'll have those details coming up. Some pretty big news coming down today. Could you be required to get a COVID vaccine? President Biden's new action plan says private companies with 100 or more workers must require employees to be vaccinated or tested weekly for the COVID virus. Also, workers at health facilities that receive Medicare or Medicaid money will also have to be fully vaccinated. And all federal and contract workers have to get their shots as well or face losing their jobs. Critics say the president doesn't have the power to impose new rules like this. Court cases are expected now. UPS is hiring. The shipping company is looking for 600 seasonal workers in the Knoxville area. The jobs will last from October through January. UPS stays that, says that over the last three years, about one third of people hired for seasonal jobs were later hired for a permanent position. Two families from Alcoa basically getting the gift of a lifetime. Yeah, there were cheers and tears, the tears of joy. Blunt County's Habitat for Humanity gave two single moms and their kids keys to new homes. One was built in memory of the mother of a donor involved in that project. Your first alert forecast with meteorologist Paige Noel. You really couldn't have asked for a more beautiful today. day today. The weather was perfect. It wasn't too hot, it wasn't too cool. The sun was out. More of this is on the way and it's going to be perfect for the game as well. Oh yeah, we're really going to have some perfect football weather, whether it's Friday night football or the Vols on Saturday. We're going to continue to see these just very nice and comfortable conditions continue. Two weeks in a row, two for the Vols. I mean, couldn't ask for anything better. 81 for the high today in Knoxville, though. Some of us only got to the 70s. Got to 79 in Morristown, 77 in Greenville. Got to 78 up towards Middlesboro. Got to 75 in Crossville. So very comfortable. Rinse and repeat day, really, as we head into tomorrow. Definitely a cooler start to the day, though. So make sure to maybe put the light jacket on the kids early in the morning as you're headed out to school. 57 degrees. A little bit of some patchy fog possible, but overall seeing plenty of sunshine as we head throughout the day. So you can see those temperatures starting out a little bit chilly by noon. We're closer to about those low to mid 70s. 81 for that high. And by the time we get to those evening hours into those 70s once again and with that sun setting tomorrow night, definitely going to be a little bit chilly once again, but plenty of sunshine expected. Winds from the northeast kind of bringing in that cooler air. You can have that forecast where you live. High of 81 in Loudoun, Maryville, 80 in Tomatisville and Sweetwater. 
76 Crossville, Jamestown, 77 towards Oneida, 81 there, Clinton and Oak Ridge, 79 La Follette, but 78 for that high Angelico, 78 also into Tazewell, 79 Morristown, Rogersville, Newport, 78 Hartford, 80 into Blaine, 79 for that high in Pigeon Forge, a little bit cooler up towards the Great Smoky Mountains at 69 degrees. Also, tomorrow the Tennessee Valley Fair begins at 5 o'clock if you think about heading out. Weather's going to be perfect for that as well. We'll be near 81 by 5 o'clock, 75 by 7 with that sun setting there right around 751, 67 by 9 o'clock. Now the fair closes at 10. However, there are fireworks at 1030. If you're going to be there after sunset, definitely recommend bringing kind of a light jacket or a hoodie in case you get a little bit cool. But your seat suncast as we head into Saturday, you're right out to the game. Really, you're just going to need sunscreen and sunglasses. Plenty of sunshine with that noon kickoff, so make sure you're just also staying a little hydrated. It could get a little bit warm in that sunshine, but looking like a just perfect forecast for your all ball forecast presented by Food City. Not looking at a whole lot of rain heading into the next several days, about less than a quarter of an inch total. Maybe getting close to a quarter of an inch there along the mountaintops, but really remaining dry. That really continues heading into the weekend. Temperatures into about the low to mid 80s. Bringing back those upper 80s though, heading into next week. That's when we also start to bring back the humidity. So gonna be feeling closer to the upper 80s to lower 90s. Few spotty storms possible Wednesday and Thursday, but overall looking pretty good to me. All right, Paige, thank you. Let's take a look at live look at the rock on UT's campus tonight. What's going on there? Yeah, students spent much of the evening painting the rock red, white, and blue to draw attention to 9-11. Saturday is of course the 20th anniversary of the attacks on America. High school football big on Fridays, also big on Thursdays here in East Tennessee. We've got rivalry Thursday wrap ahead. Plus a big game for the balls this weekend as Pitt comes into town. We're hearing from Coach Heifel as he prepares for his first big test. Follow Varsity All Access on Twitter for the latest news and scores. Then tune in to WVLT News Wednesday at 6 to find out who is named the Varsity All Access Player of the Week. Brought to you by Food City. Get your first alert forecast on WVLT News. Good evening, everybody. Coach Josh Heifel met with the media one final time today before Saturday's noon kickoff on ESPN. He says it's a big test, but he likes the team's preparation and mindset this week. You know, the Vols had two guys rush for over 100 yards last week. One of them was Juco transfer number eight, Tyon Evans, who our Jimmy Hyams reports is doubtful for the game due to health reasons. UT hopeful he'll be cleared, as they are for center Cooper Mays, who's nursing a sore ankle. Coach Heifel says he's had a good last 48 hours. We'll see. Also a game time decision is defensive end Byron Young. It's an eligibility issue for the highly touted pass rusher from his days at an Alabama prep academy. You know, with or without those guys, the coach says again, game two will be a big test against a team that he went one and one against while head coach at UCF. This is a physical fo football game. Difference in the game uh, between the two years in particular was the turnovers um, early and uh, you know, not taking advantage of some of the opportunities. Um, it's a good football team uh, in all three phases, but on the defense side of it, veteran, uh, physical, uh, front seven. Uh, their safeties do a great job in run support. Uh, you got to create some seams and, and make some big plays, and it's going to be man press on the outside. You got to be able to make some one on one plays. On quarterback Joe Milton, Coach Heifel said today that he got off balance a couple times against Bowling Green, but believes he'll be in a better position here this week. So it's Tennessee football on Saturday, but tonight we kicked off week four of the high school football season with our rivalry Thursday game. Mark Packer was in the booth for Gatlinburg Pittman at undefeated and third ranked Loudon. Well, tonight on Rivalry Thursday, the number three team in the state in 3A, the Loudon Redskins, were a little slow getting out of the blocks, but then once they did, they turned on the afterburners and uh, ran away with the race, if you will. Let's show you what happened early on Gatlinburg-Pittman. Watch the catch by Branson James going high, and then that will lead to this touchdown, Levi Hill. It's seven to nothing, Gatlinburg-Pittman. The defense for the Highlanders played really well until this this right here, Keaton Herrig, the quarterback, 58 yards down the sideline from the 21 to the 21. And then the fastball was the first of his six touchdown passes on the night. Game tied at seven right before the end of the first half, and GP fakes a punt. They give Loudon great field position, and here's another touchdown. This one to Jackson Collins. He gets in. 
They start to run away with this one, a 20 to seven lead. That made it a football game. And then this right here, one of the plays of the night, Caden Dawkins, watch this down the sideline. He's caught, nope, he's caught, got the angle, nope, he's gone. All the way for the touchdown, and Loudon improves to 4-0 and with a 43-22 to win tonight. This Loudon team looks like a team that we will see all the way down the stretch in 3A. Really good football team here at Loudon. By the way, Keaton Herrig, the quarterback, six touchdown passes tonight. Final score, Loudon gets the win over Gatlinburg Pittman, 43-22. to Symphony Orchestra's free concert on the square tonight in downtown Knoxville. The family-friendly program ranged from the classics to the Beatles all the way to Rocky Top. And if you're thinking about maybe going to Market Square, Friday night football, Vols football, weather's looking absolutely perfect over the next few days. 81 on Friday, 84 Saturday, 85 on Sunday. We are two days away now from the attacks on America 20th anniversary. So proud. 